Content warnings. Darn, I never thought we'd make a serious intro, but here we are. If you are familiar with 13 Reasons Why, you'll already be aware of the sensitive topics covered. So, content warnings. In this episode, we might mention or even discuss in depth suicide, self harm, bullying, sexual assault, and rape. Yes, I'm censoring that last one. No, I won't explain why that one specifically. And we are not going to cover all of them, but they might be mentioned, so please be aware of that. Welcome to another episode of Tea and Toffees, a kind of weekly VTuber podcast. Hello, I'm Nightshade, your local under demon. And hi, I'm Cecilia. I was a witch in my previous life. Hello, this is Editing Nightshade. While working on this video, I noticed that at times Cecilia sounds amused while talking about some very serious topics. She has asked me to clarify that she is taking this seriously and that is just the natural sound of her voice. Should I sound amused, I will take full credit. I'm not a decent human being after all. So, don't get the pitchforks out. Or do, but against humanity and not us. What? Cecilia tells me I'm not supposed to say that. Anyway, enjoy the episode. For once, we're not going to fawn over the media we picked for the episode. The topic you picked. Horrible decision. Horrible decision. Yeah, well, we are rolling with it now, and we didn't fawn over Sabrina either, nor Harry Potter. True, but I think certain reasons why might be a special hell of loathing. Chilling in the trenches of Sabrina was like a guilty pleasure or something, and Harry Potter... Oh well. Let's begin, shall we? Hmm. It's based on a book! It's based, based on, on a book! A book. Still stylized as uh, 13 Reasons Why, see video for audio listeners, or look it up, or ignore it. The title is the same in most languages, sometimes just 13. In Russian, for example, or the Turkish title did 13 Reasons to Die. But then you got German and Danish, I believe, and they call it Dead Girls Do Not Lie. And as we learn, dead girls can in fact lie. Well, if you only read the book, you wouldn't know that. And the book is original source material. I suppose. Honestly, we should have made this episode 13. But episode 13 comes out at the beginning of next month, and the first Saturday of each month is, unfortunately, reserved for Harry Potter. Also means that the second episode, about 13 reasons why, is not going to be the next episode. Harry Potter wants to be important and decided to be in between. Oh, yeah. Hm. Hm. So, in this first part, we will discuss the original novel and how the TV show failed to do what it set out to do. In the second part, which will be released after our next Harry Potter rant, we will discuss some random thoughts, characters like Hannah and Mr. Porter, as well as some of the more sensitive topics the show is trying to address. Cecilia, what was your high school experience like? Um, well, compared to what goes on at Liberty High in 13 Reasons Why, my high school experience was boring. But it wasn't without things to tell either. The school system uh, in the country I grew up in is different from the system in the US. Um, we basically have a primary school and a high school, so to speak. Which, four years of primary school and then six or eight years for secondary school, depending on which kind of secondary school you go to, right? Um, yeah, like, uh, it, it depends also on the region you're in, in in this country, like some... Have, have, have others that the primary school goes on longer. Um, sometimes it goes up to sixth grade and then the secondary would be four or six years, but it can also be seven years or nine if primary school ends after fourth grade or those that have 13 grades in total. So it's a bit complicated and it is, yeah, it differs a lot depending on what you decide for, which school you, you want to go to, if you have a choice at all, and which region you live in and whatever. But yeah, so I went to secondary or high school knowing no one in my year. 
Uh, I never had many friends growing up, but I always uh, had a best friend. And I got myself a best friend uh, once I entered high school. And then that friendship broke apart. Um, they kind of told me that I was weird just because I didn't eat uh, the, the little package of gummy bears all at once. I spread it out to different breaks between lessons. That's such a stupid reason. Such, such a stupid reason. Why would that be considered weird? I don't know why that would be considered weird, but... Apparently it was, and now it sounds like a really minor thing, but for me it wasn't, at, at least not back then. And they didn't say it in an like, offhand comment kind of way, with amusement, but they said it judgingly and repeatedly. So it really got on my nerves in the end, and I don't remember if there was more, maybe there was, but I was still a kid at the end of the day, and... Who remembers everything from their childhood, honestly? And I also remember that there was another person who was nice to me after that friendship broke apart. But since that person was also friends with my ex-best friend, uh, I was rather reluctant. And it never developed into a proper friendship. So I was alone for a while and I didn't have any friends, at least not in my year. Uh, I had one friend in, in the year above me um, and there was also one incident where someone in my class hit my backpack while I was on the toilet. It wasn't far, just by the nearest staircase, but that happened, I suppose. And at my high school, like, there was not really more than that, at least not more that I know of. Um, I was basically the prime target for bullying, now that I think about it. But apart from what I already told, there was nothing. At least nothing I remember, and I would remember if there had been more. And, yeah, I don't, I don't want to know what it would have been at a different high school, to be honest. And I eventually made more friends in the years, uh, as the years went on, and some of which I'm still close to, so... It wasn't all that bad. Quite minor overall. Yeah. I obviously did not go to school. Seeing as I'm a demon. Yeah. And that demon and just got stuck here a, a few years ago. Mm. Yeah. We don't. In my world, we don't have a school system because it's unnecessary. Mm. But I do know people who went to school in this world who got called names. And had arms whistling and shouting after them in the hallways. And classmates calling them weird and freakish for reading, like, manga during breaks. And dressing certain ways and never smiling and stuff. Someone I know got a threatening letter once. But uh, those people never suffered from physical bullying. Though I know that one of them considered taking their life because of the rebel abuse. Because it got so bad and oh, wow. they suffered heavily from depression. Um, I am really glad I didn't go to to the high school from the, the people you know where that happened. And I'm glad I had my high school where everything was rather mild and not a lot was going on. Hmm. Sure. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me, I suppose. Why is there always so much drama and stories that take place in high school? Um, teenage hormones? Uh... Yeah, I, you know, I keep forgetting about that. You know, I think some people watching the show do forget about that too. Uh, probably. Like, these kids are teenagers. Their actions aren't exactly rational. The way they think and act and perceive the world isn't really rational. They're emotional. I know I don't get them most of the time, but part of that is because I don't understand humans in general. And in the case of 13 Reasons Why, the US culture is getting added to the mix and you get this hot mess. Yeah, so sad. No, it's unfortunate yeah. because the show could have been great, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I don't know whether the show is good or the characters realistic or the way Hannah addressed certain issues more than others and put people on the spot was... I don't even know what I'm saying. Point is, teenagers make even less sense than humans in general. Keep that in mind. 
Yeah. The show could still be a bit for tail on top of that. Who am I to know? Hmm. But, all right. With two seasons in total. Uh, don't you mean four seasons? No. Two. The so-called third and fourth season are poorly written fanfiction. Sorry, fanfiction writers. I know there's some really good stuff out there, but there's also a lot of garbage. So, for me, all following discussions and arguments about characters and plot and such will be based primarily on season one and a dash of season two might be in there somewhere. Yeah, I think most of my notes are on season one and two as well, but some are also about season three and four, unless you cut them out, of course. Will I? Did I? Who knows? Back to what I was saying. Uh, never mind, I forgot what I wanted to say. Let me just... Tape 1, side B. The original novel. Who is even surprised at this point that I haven't read the original source material? No one. Yeah, I get as much. I read... The book season one is based on about 10 years ago, give or take. I borrowed it from a friend who was reading it for school. Hmm, how fitting. Very, very same school I talked about earlier. Ah. So it's been a very long time and I did not quite read it again for this episode, but I did skim through the chapters. From before revisiting the novel, I remembered like two things. One, that it was never confirmed if the photography dude was actually... The one she accuses on the tapes or not. And I had no evidence that it was Tyler and never even saw her stalker's face. Which is important. Yeah. And second, that I don't remember a single thing about the protagonist and I'm not meant to. Forgettable so, protagonist. Yeah, not... It's Our protagonist is meant to be bland and tasteless. He is only there to give us readers a way to experience Hannah's story. That's why it is written in a first-person narrative. The book isn't about Clay or any of the people on the tapes. It's about Hannah and what she went through, the reasons why she killed herself. 13 reasons to die, like the Turkish title says. Indeed. The show gives Clay a kind of actual personality, makes him socially awkward, has him react to things and face consequences for his actions. Reactions. Both. Kind of. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Which somehow makes him the most annoying character of the entire series. Like, he was such a nice guy in the novel. I mean, you don't get to see him take any actions, but he wasn't such an annoying aunt. Not to the people around him, those involved with the tapes, not to Hannah when she went to him after the party, which didn't happen in the novel. They apparently avoided each other. TV show, TV show Clay is uh, so f noxious, Satan's sake. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. I really hated him towards the end of the show when I watched it with uh, two of my friends. And if memory serves me right, I started calling him a lump of clay somewhere in season three. And I stuck with that until the end. He was just a lump of clay. Fitting. Yeah. So... The order of the tapes was changed for the show. Clay was originally number 9, right before Justin's second tape, and not number 11. Mm. And in the show, Clay and Hannah were close, kind of. But in the in, compared to the novel, it's like in the novel they ha rarely knew each other. It's, mm. They never even spoke before the party. Interesting. So the show made them have a closer f friendship before that. And Tony's also more involved in the show and looks after Clay and all that. So Clay, re Clay really needs it. Yes. Hannah and the book had heard rumors about Clay. And they were all, without a fail, about how good of a person he was. So she wanted to get to know him better. Because he was like, his rumors were the total opposite of her rumors, right? Yeah. And it worked out on that party. They talked a lot. They talked about personal stuff and more lighthearted topics and eventually ended up in the bedroom making out. <laughs> but then Hannah freaked out and sent Clay away and Clay, being the good boy that he is, listened to her. Clay's tape is in there because Hannah thought he deserved to know why she killed herself. No, no other reason. Hmm. She doesn't blame him for anything, not even for walking away. 
And I believe Bukle doesn't blame himself for it either. He's just really... He's grieving, obviously, but... Yeah, he is. Like I said, we don't get to know as much about his thoughts, even though it's from his perspective. This is then followed by Justin's second tape, then Jenny's, who is Sherry in the show, and then Bryce. Because she tells her story chronologically. Hannah talked with Clay, freaked out, witnessed what happened to Jessica, was offered a ride home by Jenny, and then, several days later, in the aftermath of a different party, one Hannah didn't actually go to because she was grounded and also house-sitting for someone, the hot tub scene with Bryce happened. Yeah. Makes chronologically sense. Mm-hmm. The show changed some details there, switched Clay's tape around for drama and... Drama. Yeah. So in the book, Clay listens to all the tapes over the course of one single night, and this change in the TV show resulted in... Well, frankly, the pacing is really off multiple times. Just weird. But it made it more dramatic for the viewer. Precisely what this show doesn't need to do. Too much drama takes away from the message that they supposedly want to convey. Yeah. Anyway. We do get some of Clay's inner thoughts in the novel, but none of the emotional confrontations the TV show adaption t- shows us. We, we don't get insight into the th- thoughts of other people from the tapes at all, because we don't even read them. And the book only shows us Anna's side of the story. Tyler, for one, falls victim to that, in a way. Because, see, we don't know whether he stalked Hannah. Could be, could also not be. And if he is indeed innocent, then Hannah condemned him to the same fate that she suffered through. The TV show adaption tells us about the other characters, what they went through, what they are going through, how their circumstances in Hannah's tapes affect their lives. Essentially, the TV show adaption shows us more than one side of the story. And it gives us names from... It gives the names from Hannah's tapes, actual faces with actual personalities, and that changes things a lot. Which, in my opinion, is good. It's all about perspective. Like Fire Emblem Three Houses. Or Fire Emblem If slash Fates. Yeah, that too. Yes. Back to novel. So, the lawsuit and everything after season one is obviously original Netflix material. The novel ends with Hannah saying thank you. The very, very end of the tapes, after a very, very long pause. And then Clay sends the tapes to the next person on the list and then continues with his life, almost as usual. He does reach out to a girl he was once friends with, and I actually vaguely remember this part from before revisiting the book, and he thinks she might be in a similar situation to Hannah, which is Sky, but Sky is rather different in the show. Yeah. The TV show, having given us deeper insights into the characters, has obviously more plot lines to wrap up and it kind of does that, but also sets itself up for the next season, so meh. Mm. Another change I wouldn't have mentioned if Netflix hadn't cut the scene out is the manner of Hannah's suicide. In the novel, she overdosed on pills. Netflix originally depicted her suicide in a very graphic scene where she sat in the bathtub and cut her wrists. I probably should not admit to liking the scene, but I did. I liked how it was intended to make the viewers highly uncomfortable. And the blood, of course. I guess that you liked that scene. Obviously. I hadn't known they cut the scene until I rewatched the series in preparation for this episode and noticed noticed it missing. And then asked me about it. Well, I had to make sure. Yeah, I suppose. I didn't even... To our human... To our human audience. Wait, you wanted to say something? Yes. Because I didn't even remember that there was the scene to begin with. So... You didn't? It was a really... It was a really impactful scene. Yeah, probably. It was so graphic. But I didn't... I probably just maybe watched it after they already changed it. So... How was I to no, know No, that no, no, we watched missing. it around the same time. We did? I remember that you and with your friends watched yeah. it around the same time as I did, and the scene was there. Uh, maybe my memory is getting bad. Anyway. To our human audience. Suicide is not a solution for any of your problems. Talk to someone you trust. Seek help. Ugh. 
Saying those words tastes like ash in my mouth. I hate behaving like a decent human being. So I will repeat Nightshade's word for our audience. Talk to someone you trust. Seek help. If you take your own life, you'll cut yourself off from the reincarnation cycle and be condemned for it. To a part of our audience that finds itself trapped in a human body and is desperate to escape, suicide won't free you. It will, in fact, have the opposite effect. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you'll have to endure until either this world manages to ascend to the next dimension or you die of natural causes. Though whether that actually frees us up for debate. Or maybe someone will come from outside to help. Either way, one day we shall be free, and it won't be achieved by killing our flesh prison. How would that even work in your case? Not at all. But I know that if I were alive, I would have thought about it. But I could never do that to the people who care about me. Yeah, I could also never do that to the people who care about me. And I also hope that the people I care about won't do that to me. And I saw how the suicide in the family can affect someone. I only met the person in question once as a child at a family gathering. But my mother struggled with it for, for a little while uh, after we were told. This uh, person was around my age, they were in high school at the time, and had struggled with mental health in the past, but they got better. And then a friend noticed it getting worse again, and they were concerned and reached out to the parents. And that was absolutely the right thing to do. And they went into their child's room and briefly talked to them. And then the mother left the room to call the therapist and asked how they should proceed, what they were supposed to do now. And the father just didn't pay attention for a single moment and the window was closed but not unlocked. But, but, but unlocked, it was not locked. And they, they did make a point of looking at the window when they entered the room, but it looked like it, it, it was closed to them. And they didn't notice that it was unlocked. Oh, wow. With the parents present? That's actually rather unusual. Most do it in private, alone. Yeah, the father was still present in the room. The mother was in the hallway making the call. Yeah. That's f up. Wow. I, well, I may be the most selfish person you will ever meet. You noticed that I started the sentence with the word I. Mm. Even my niceness, and I'm not kind, never kind, only ever polite and nice, is, well, or not of selfish intent. And my heart may be made of stone, frozen over and cracked in several places. But I still would not inflict that kind of pain onto the people who care about me and would grieve losing me. And that wouldn't solve any of my problems. Except maybe freeing me of this prison made of flesh, but there's no guarantee for that and literally everything speaks against it. But I'm undead and incapable of dying anyway, so there's no use in speculating about it. Anyway, so to close this segment, as far as adaptions go, the first season of 13 Reasons Why is quite good. The show did a good job at doing what adaptions are supposed to do. Adapt the material to the new medium, change what is necessary, flesh out characters if you can, and do it in a natural way, etc. The ending of season one is a bit controversial, and from season two onwards it can obviously not exactly be regarded as an adaption anymore. And then the show proceeds to fall down the hole of so many others did. There was no more source material to adapt. Look at Game of Thrones. The only difference here is that they weren't doing a TV series about an ongoing book series, and the writer just stopped writing for a decade or two. Or forever. Well, we never get to see... The intended end of A Song of Ice and Fire. He will never see it. That's just... Nope. Yeah. He will never write. He will never finish the next book, nor the last one. Probably Because I think not. there were two. Yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah. But 13 Reasons Why only ever had one novel and that's it. I have yet to encounter an adaption that manages to do well once it delves into original storylines after it surpasses its source material. 
like Game of Thrones and the original Full Metal Alchemist anime, to name a few, did not do a good job. Mm-hmm. Anyway, while I say that season one was a good adaption, what I'm not saying is that it that it manages to bring its mes- message across in a good way. I'm also not saying it didn't. It's complicated. We have so many things in life. It's always complicated. Yes. All right. Let's talk adaption. Yeah, but didn't you do that just now? I talked about the original novel and some changes they made, but not how good of an adaption it actually is. Kind of unrelated, but first thing I want to talk about. Is it weird for me to say that I find this show hard to watch at times, not because of all the sensitive topics it covers, but because of all the kissing and especially the scenes where the characters go beyond mere kissing? Honestly, same. Real, peeping, real people making out makes me so uncomfortable. I'm fine with, like, smutty fanfiction and... He- Wait, would I have to censor that? Anyway, not safe for work. Not safe for work artworks. Anything that's not real people made of flesh. That That's fine. That's good. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm also fine with what you mentioned just now. And then the moment 3D people are involved, uh, that makes me shudder. Nah, S- nah, nah. Yeah, same. Also, along the same line, I just don't get Jessica in season one. Out of all the unrelatable characters in the show, she's somewhere at the top in season one. Constantly wanting to make out and have sex and then the decision to hang out with Bryce and I just don't get her at all. And it's not about that part that happened, the, the Bryce part. Her denial and general reaction to the Bryce situation is... Perfectly understandable for the most part. And the choices Jessica makes in season 2 are perfectly understandable. It's the rest about her personality and decisions in season 1 that I just don't understand. Yeah. I also liked her more in the later seasons. I just found her more relatable in them. I don't get most characters, truth be told. I don't understand them. I don't understand their actions. And I'm not sure whether that's because I'm an ancient under demon not driven by human but but puberty or because all or at least most of these characters are truly unrelatable like jessica tyler bryce freaking clay montgomery tony courtney insert other names here i don't understand them over half of the main characters i don't understand at all and the rest i only can get behind somewhat i guess baker and jensen family parents like the Baker family, uh, the Baker parents and the Jensen parents are like the least unrelatable of the bunch. And guess what? They're adults. Adults. Mm. Not teenagers. Nope. Not the teenagers. Yeah. Also, the season two trial is stupid because it undoes all we learned in season one. It undoes Hannah's story. It's. I hate it. Season two just makes me mad. Yes, Hannah was an unreliable narrator. Plot character, but season two went out of its way to portray that in a way that contradicted her actions from season one. It takes away their meaning. It, I don't know. I know some people like the way season two shows us different sides to the story, and I am one of those people. But I think that could have been achieved in a different way. And also, isn't the show supposed to address sensitive topics in a meaningful way? Season one already missed the mark by a bit, but I think season two misses even worse. It's, I don't know, is it because I've read the book and generally don't like adaptions devi- deviating from the source material for the most part, or are seasons two to four just utter rubbish compared to season one? There's nothing compelling about them that makes me actually want to watch them. I think in the general opinion of people, seasons three and four are competing for worst season by a landslide. And while I personally dislike season two a lot, I cannot deny that the way they had their characters speak up and seek help was done well. So, take the plot about past events out, focus on the character development that happens in the season 2 present time, and it's not actually bad. Yeah. But then, but then, season 3 introduces a new main character, and Arnie is literally the most obnoxious self-insert OC you can find out there. It's like... Self-insert OCs are kind of infamous in the fanfiction. 
well, well, less well-written fanfics, and there are good OC fanfics. There are even good self-insert OC fanfics or self-inserts in general because they don't need to be OCs. But just they do have a kind of deserved stigma, and Arnie to me feels exactly like the bad kind of self-insert OC. There is one good thing about her character. Annie says mum and not mom and that somehow made me happy. And Annie also says dance instead of dance and it's a British pronunciation and I love it. British accent you mean? Yeah. Her entire speech is British accent. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Yes, uh, Grace Scythe, I don't know how you pronounce that last name to be honest is in fact a british actress and she also had a voice acting role in elden wing wait i looked something up oh no you did you did indeed as much as i love british giving arnie a british accent somehow made her more obnoxious for me i have to disagree with you there and why did they try to turn Bryce, of all people, into a sympathetic character? Why? Having them make both Bryce and then Monty, after what they did, into somewhat sympathetic characters, and then killing them off, is hard to watch. They, they should have handled that differently. Like, the moment Bryce touched Hannah's arse without permission, we knew he was a complete art. And it only got worse from there. But if you have rich parents and grandparents and your grandpa is also a narcissist and you are the captain of a popular sports team and you basically have a get out of jail free card for most things, at least, which we see in season two, Bryce gets a very light sentence uh, for the just because he is a rich white boy. And the judge tells them that, that both Bryce and Jessica need to think about their decisions and stuff. And what the actual f Literally the worst thing the judge could have said to Jessica. Yeah, and why exactly are they trying to give Bryce that, that redemption arc? Ca can't he just be the... the, the ir irredeemable art that he was written to be like why but I, I suppose the showrunners wanted us to see why people become f***ed up with with the Bryce redemption arc so far we have seen like Hannah and uh, others as the victims and Bryce as the aggressor and now they probably want to show us that people have different ways to cope with stuff like Hannah fell into depression and uh, Bryce became an art And we don't call sexual predators monsters, apparently, according to the people behind the, sh uh, the show, because that makes them bigger than us. And monsters are in most cases made. And therapists also don't ask why you are bad. They ask what happened to you. And... They want you to sympathize with the monsters because they are only monsters because their surroundings made them this way. And with Monty, the theme is apparently that he is always alone. And then I'm wondering, but he is surrounded by so many friends. But, but I guess family-wise, he is alone. And his father like spat in his face at the mere thought that his son might be attracted to men as well. Uh, yeah. Ugh. 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 Why? Don't f make the f into a f sympathetic, sympathetic character. Sake. That was a lot of. Yes, f the show. Yeah. And then the pra the, the the tape price we called it for Jessica and. Oh. I don't know what to do with all this. It's complicated. It's controversial. It's conflicting. It's. I'm sure everyone who watched that scene has already formed their own opinions. Uh, let's. Yeah, let's. No. Two seasons. Season three, four. Never heard of it. Two seasons. Two seasons. I guess we can work with that. 
So, um, another important point. The warning at the beginning of each season is nice and all, but they should have made episode-specific trigger warnings. Was there even any warning at all for the very violent assault of Tyler in season 2? No, there wasn't. And the attempted school shooting might be a trigger too, considering what Sissy and I have heard of the US over the years. And generally, there are so many potential triggers everywhere. You need a warning for that. D did they put the disclaimer there later? Because I don't actually remember it being there at the beginning when I watched it with my two friends. And, uh, yeah, oh, okay, the, the disclaimer was only there at the beginning of episode one in season one, um, which I noticed once the second episode started. And uh, then at the end, you had a short info, but... If you download it on Netflix, you don't even get to see the uh, the Netflix disclaimer that at least pops up uh, in in the top left corner. I only saw it uh, like for like for like one episode or so, which I watched uh, on online, and it was like, oh, there are actual disclaimers on there. But then again, if you don't immediately notice, oh, the disclaimer popped up there, let me read this disclaimer. And if you're a, a slow reader, because maybe English is not your native language or s something like that, then it's it's actually hard to read all of the disclaimers in one go because there are a lot of disclaimers. I watched it on my PC and I did not get a single disclaimer pop up in the top corner. Nope, there was no. Wow. Also... They originally did not have any content warnings at all and only added them after multiple complaints once season one had come out. That's bad, in my opinion. That's that, that's not even my opinion. That's That's just bad. Yes. Just because it should be obvious from the premise that this show is full of potentially triggering content doesn't mean you can neglect putting proper warnings in place. Mm. Like, take a moment... At the beginning of every single episode and put all the content warnings relating to that specific episode there, both visually and as audio. And don't you dare put the skip button at the bottom right corner. Don't you dare. Don't do yeah. that. I think the goal for this show was to start and encourage conversations about sensitive topics like suicide, sexual assault and mental health. That was indeed the goal. But they didn't manage that. Why? Because they didn't get their priorities straight. They focused more on entertainment value in the form of teenage drama rather than the actual sensitive topics they promised to address. They do talk about it, but it's buried underneath all the hormone-driven drama. Take season one. The narrative of season one is framed like a revenge story. But from my understanding of the original novel, that was never Hannah's intention. Or maybe it was, but it was always clear to me at least, that Hannah is inherently flawed and her suicide did not solve her problems. T tapes, the tapes did not bring her peace in the afterlife or anything. I mean, there is no afterlife for those who would take their own lives. I did not interpret Hannah's character as someone who would kill themselves for revenge. She wanted it to end and she recorded the tapes as her version of a suicide note. Although she really should have left something for her parents. Then again, we don't know whether she left anything for her parents in the book. And Tyler recorded a video before going on his failed suicide mission. And Alex wrote uh, an actual note before trying to end it all. Yeah. Whether suicide is selfish or not, perhaps we can agree that a suicidal person does not kill themselves for the purpose of making others feel guilty. It's just... no. I agree with you. It's... Some people say suicide in real life is not selfish. That suicidal behavior stems from thoughts of being a burden, which is essentially what depression is like in most cases. But I think that's not quite true. I think there is a large variety of reasons and thoughts for committing suicide. If all you want is to be free from the shackles of this world, not caring about the impact of your death on the people in your life, wouldn't that be considered selfish? I'm not saying all suicides are committed for selfish reasons, of course not, but... Some of them are. I imagine there are a lot of different reasons. Like, there are way more than just 13 reasons why. Yes. Killing yourself to make others feel, feel guilty 
is selfish and not realistic behavior. Or maybe it is, who am I to know, but this one I think is the one that's easiest to get out of. If I'm allowed to dare to compare to the next one too. It's, yeah, killing yourself because you do not want to burden your loved ones with your existence because you think your death will make their lives better. That is realistic and not selfish at all, but it is still not the right decision and it will not unburden your loved ones. It won't. No. And then killing yourself because you want your own suffering to end. You just want to stop hurting and that is all you can think about. To consider how this may impact other people in your life doesn't even occur to you. That is both selfish and realistic and still not the right decision to make. No solution to your suffering. <sighs> all right. Take a deep breath. Yes, let's do that. Deep so, breaths. Killing yourself for revenge won't work. You will be gone and they will move on sooner or later and enjoy the rest of their life and you won't be able to do that anymore. 13 Reasons Why, the show, of course, doesn't show us this. 13 Reasons Why makes it look like none of them will ever be able to move on and if this was Hannah's goal, the mission accomplished and that is a very bad message to send. Mm -hmm. Only Sky managed just to move on and she wasn't even on the tapes. Indeed. This show is as flawed as its characters, but they did try. They made something controversial and they did make people talk about the is these issues, even if the way the discussions were started wasn't how they originally intended. So this show failed to address these topics in a meaningful way, but because it was so bad at that it managed to make society talk about it by critiquing the show and criticize, criticizing the critiquing? Is that a word? I don't know. Criticizing if that is the a show. Word. Your English is usually better than mine. And trying to educate people about the way things are in real life. The problem is, though, that not everyone goes out of their way to actually think about it and view some Netflix show they just watched in a critical light and then conduct some research on the issues raised. I think most people will just watch it, take it at face value, and then move on. Or internalize what they saw, perhaps even suffer from it. Teenagers are especially at risk here. It's why they removed Hannah's graphic suicide scene and included the warning at the beginning of each season, but that doesn't change the fact that some of their depictions are potentially harmful to their audience. And like we mentioned, there are no proper trigger warnings for each episode. I do not think that the book is better. There are changes the TV show made that were good changes and there are changes that were really bad decisions to make and while it is overall a good adaption, if the source material is already controversially flawed and you keep those problems, well, then your adaption will obviously end up as a bad show regardless of, a, of how good it is as an adaption. Somehow, this entire show went from what was originally a story about even small, seemingly inconsequential actions can have huge, a huge impact on someone's life and you need to be kind to others, to a show about suicide is a good way to get revenge. It isn't. It really isn't. And then to look at all these mentally unstable kids we have. Let's throw more stones in their way to make them get worse for the sake of entertainment. Oh, mm. and let's have them get away with covering up a murder because why not? Why not? Yeah, that totally won't motivate people to try that as well. Mm, season 3 was a total mess. What was season 4 even trying to accomplish? What was the message here? There was none. But those two seasons don't exist anyway. Nothing to see here. Mm. What they should have done in the seasons beyond season 1 is to get these characters professional help for goodness sake. Address their mental health issues and show us how therapy can help them. And no, that would have been something I would have approved of. Yes. To end this part of the discussion, at one point, Sky asks, Are you alright? And Clay says, No. And then Sky replies with, That's okay. And that's how it should be. You don't need to be strong all the time. And... Well, with that, we end this week's episode. Uh, in the meantime, until the next episode, uh, our Twitter handle is uh, at TNToffees and 
We are also on Spotify for all those YouTube watches. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify, or even watching it on Spotify, we're also on YouTube at TN Toffees. And if you enjoyed this episode, even though, well, the topics are rather sensitive and not very lighthearted, but still, uh, leave us a comment with with your thoughts on, on all these things. And did you read the book? Did you enjoy the show? Did you hate it? Or were you conflicted about it? Yeah, and then like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. You know, the usual. And we will see you all in two weeks, because we're taking the fifth Saturday of the month off, if there is one. And the next episode will continue our rant about Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Part two of this discussion will instead continue in three weeks. So you'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.